Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Vietnam War. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be answering a question from a YouTuber. Um, didn't look up your name before I did this, so I apologize, but you know who you are. It was in the, uh, this is one of the other videos <clears throat> in the series. I think it was on the Jungle Fatigues one. And you're asking about placement of unit patches and all that stuff, um, and name tapes and qualification badges and all that happy stuff. So I'm going to kind of use my little example of like a fully decked out um, Vietnam infantryman in the 9th Infantry Division's uh, jungle jacket, and then we're going to be talking about the fact that most of the time patches weren't worn, um, but we'll get into that. So first of all, it's basically like the uniforms that came before it. Um, the qualification badge placement didn't change, the uniform did. So um, you've got, okay, so one, one, one little interesting thing is that in 1968 or 69, the placement of the name tapes actually became a regulation and said that they should be diagonal with the pockets on the top of the pockets, okay? Before that, it was up to the um, commanding officer's discretion uh, at either, you know, company or battalion level, uh, maybe even division, brigade, you name it. But it would be you'd see a lot of people that had the name tapes horizontally, and then you'd see a lot of people that had them diagonally. I've talked to a lot of Vietnam vets, and if they had name tapes on before 68, it seems like, some of them had it up here, some of them had it down here. And then after that, it was pretty much a universal thing, like uh, have it go with the pockets. Uh, what's weird is qualification badges, such as like the jump wings, combat infantry badge, all that stuff, um, combat medical badge, were still worn horizontally up here, where they would be above the name tape, right? Because the name tape usually started at the corner of the pocket right here on the top of the corner and would go horizontally across for like US Army and then your name. Uh, and then the qualification badge would sit on top of there in the order that they were earned. Um, and then basically that's really all there is to know about the name tapes. Now, the Marines, I don't really see them wearing a lot of name tapes throughout the Vietnam War. They wore, they did the stencils like another YouTuber brought up, but I'm sure I'm sure it might have been the same. Um, I'm not 100% positive on that, so I'm not gonna state it as a fact. And uh, Air Force was the same thing I saw. So I've seen some horizontally and some diagonally for Air Force personnel. And Navy, also didn't see a lot of them with name tapes, but um, might be the same thing. So don't know about that either for sure, but I do know about Army for sure that uh, at one point it wasn't really regulated and then it became a universally thing like diagonal. Now. That covers the name tapes, qualification badges. Um, I, I don't know all the three quarters of a half of a you know hair's length inch away from this and that. I'm sure it was an AR 670 one, but um, most of the guys out in the field that either got them sewn on by Vietnamese tailors or did it themselves, or even U.S. tailors or you know people that sewed, they're not perfect. I've yet to see a uniform that's actually perfect. Um, even generals' uniforms that I've seen. It looks like they just really eyeballed it on a combat uniform. Now, a dress uniform, that's a different story, but we're talking about the jungle fatigues now. And, um, yeah, so then, therefore, up until about 1968 as well, rank was worn, well, rank was worn on the sleeve until 1968. Before 1966, or 67, early 67, somewhere around there, these, aren't, these dates aren't, like, exact because nobody really knows, um because there was a lot of transitions, so I'll explain that in a second. So before that, the colored insignia, like the same that was worn on the Class A's, was worn on the sleeves for non-commissioned officers and enlisted. Um, officers still had the um, rank up on the collar. They usually did that. And uh, at first it wasn't subdued, and then it became subdued. So it's kind of the same thing as this. At first it was not subdued. They were the colored patches, and then in between 19... What I said, late 66, early 67... And up until about 1970 is when I really see this a lot. You're going to have the subdued enlisted rank here if they wore it. Because again, like I said in another video, a lot of times you go through so many uniforms so quickly and you didn't want to keep up and supply kind of sucks as it always does in the military. So it's like you might not actually have access to these. So everybody knew who everybody was in the unit, right? Even with the new guys coming in, everybody's like, oh, that's Sergeant so-and-so, that's Corporal so-and-so, that's, you know, Staff Sergeant or Sergeant First Class. There's your First Sergeant even if you weren't necessarily wearing ranks. So like everybody knew who everybody was and out in the field it really doesn't matter as long as you know that and you just kind of do your thing. And so in like 1968, I believe the, uh, or 69, somewhere around there, the 
collar little like subdued either pins or the so on subdued enlisted rank like for private through you know sergeant major command sergeant major those little squares were approved for use so then you start seeing around there 68 69 a bunch of guys enlisted guys wearing the little tiny rank tabs so it becomes harder to see for enlisted guys but you get used to it these are a lot easier to see from a distance so you'd be like you know good afternoon sergeant or whatever if you're like a private or something so but then they started going to these because it's it's actually harder for the enemy to see too if that actually was a factor, which sometimes it was if they could get close enough and be like, all right, if I take out that guy, these guys are going to be screwed. So that's what the thing about, and I don't know exactly the distance that they're supposed to be down again. So again, uh, you might want to Google AR 6 one and 19, whatever, to figure that out. But I do know they were worn on the sleeves and then they went to the collar and you stop seeing these for the most part around 1970. There's still an exception, of course, but... And then Air Force, I believe it was the same thing. It was, you know, colored at first, white on um, olive drab, and then it became the subdued blue and name tapes and all that stuff. At first, even on the first pattern, Jungle Fatigues, um, not it wasn't for a whole lot. This is like before 1965. And around 1965, when the first units really started getting there, they did still wear the white name tape with the black and gold U.S. Army. Very interesting. But um, for the most part, what you're going to see throughout the Vietnam War is the subdued name tapes um, if you see them and then patches unit patches same thing they started out but these kind of went on a little bit longer because of um stocks and stuff so this is kind of what i like to talk about is the unit patches which i think i could make my own video on it but i'll just mention the basics here because it does go along with this they were worn basically on the seam of the shoulder somewhere around there like a half an inch or something like that again i don't know the actual distance they're inconsistent on original fatigues that i've seen they're some are half an inch some are you know the 16th of an inch, so whatever. So basically it's just whatever looks somewhat reasonable, um, combat patches included. So in, in like up until about, well, throughout the whole war actually, but for the most part, subdued patches were authorized in about 1967 again, same time these were authorized. And at first the army didn't really manufacture subdued variants um, because they all had the colored variants that they wore up until, you know, through the end of the Vietnam War. So like for the 9th Infantry Division, you see guys that are wearing like full color patches, the same ones that would go on the Class A's, the full embroidered ones, up until the end of their uh, stay in Vietnam. Now these, these are the first variant. These are the, what's called a twill patch. So it's literally just um, green, olive drab twill material. And the only thing that's embroidered is the black part of it. Now with embroider, later embroidered patches, the whole thing is embroidered. They're a lot thicker. They last longer. Um, these didn't last as long. They fell apart. As you can already see, the edges are kind of fraying just from sewing it on and wearing it for a couple weeks. Um, so that's the first variant. And then the later ones came out in like 1968, 1969. So you see all three variants of these patches throughout the entire war with every army unit. I've seen 25th Infantry Division patches, 1st Infantry, 23rd. All these color patches are being worn up until 73 for the units that were there that long. Um, now you don't start seeing subdued until about 1967 is when it really started happening a lot. And then throughout there, you see these, the twill patches. And then from about 1968 to 69, you'll see the, um, the embroidered patches, the thicker ones like we still use today. Um, but they were just olive drab in that variant, whatever. So, and those were placed, like I said, right here. Um, yeah, that's basically what, what I've got for the insignia and the placement of everything. So those are the approximate years. Again, I, I can't get a straight answer. Some people say it's, you know, late 66 or early 67. So that's why I'm just kind of saying it's a general idea of when when that happened. And it wasn't like, a, okay, after this date, not authorized that, except for the name tapes, you know, bam. It was just like, okay, well, here's, if you want to wear patches. But most of the time, they didn't wear patches due to supply issues. And they're just going through so many uniforms so quickly. It's like, unless you've got a decent amount of time and you really cared about your patches and you could get them, Generally, you're just going to wear like sanitized jungle fatigues, or you might get one with your just your unit patch on it, no rank, because they might have done that at a area before they sent you the jungle fatigues to your unit. So usually that's what you see. Um, some units, I mean, they wore like the 101st and the 173rd Airborne Brigade. They uh, they wore a lot of uh, colored patches throughout the end of the war, like unit patches. Uh, First Infantry Division did the same thing, but. Yeah, all right, I'll quit ranting on that. Hopefully that informed you. Hopefully this video is not too long, but I had to get all that information out. So that's what that's kind of what the insignia on the jungle fatigue uniform, um, kind of the brief history of that. Um, sorry, I didn't cover much on Marines, Air Force, and Navy, but they didn't wear their stuff as much, like, at all. But the Army was more on their, you know, ranks and whatever like this, so... All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you learned something. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and hit the notification bell. 
Um, I'll be doing this series for quite some time. I will be getting into gear and stuff and later on. It's again, it's still winter out. All my stuff's out in the garage. It's buried behind stuff, and I just don't want to go out there right now. But I will be doing gear, more uniform stuff, uh, weapons this year. We'll be really getting into it. So stay tuned, and I appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you on the next video.